New co-op games release every single month, and we talk about them every single month. But now it's time for the yearly roundup, so enjoy these 80 couch co-op games fresh from 2023. This is a two-player co-op adventure for PC and Switch, where you play as a small wolf cub and a young fawn who need to work together to make it back to their families. It's a calming little jaunt, and we release a review on it that you can go check out in the description of this video. Also released last month exclusively on the Nintendo Switch was Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. This is a one to four player couch co-op romp that definitely gears itself a little more towards family friendly play as it is pretty easy. It's a remake of the original from the Wii and is available as with just about every single one of Nintendo's remakes at $60 a pop, but there is a demo that you can try out first if that's what you wanna do. WBSC eBaseball Power Pros is a mouthful, but it was released at the low, low price of $1, and we've heard that it's pretty good for that price. So if you are extremely broke and looking for a game to pick up with your friends, then this might just be the one for you, if you're into baseball. Knights of Braveland released exclusively on PC and is a beat-em-up that gives off heavy Castle Crasher vibes. Because it's only on PC, we haven't tried to pick it up yet, but we would love to hear what you think if you do. This last one is kind of a why the heck not mention it game and that is gigantosaurus dino cart which was released at the price of 40 dollars i'm not really sure why you would be interested in picking this one up over the classic mario kart or crash team racing but if this one is for you then let us know in the comments what interests you about it now blessedly we get to move on to all of the wonderful games that released in march March 2nd brought Patch Quest to PC, and this game surprised us the first time that we played it. Become an animal wrangling cowboy as you try to catch them all and blast away at enemies with an arrangement of ammo made from fruit. This roguelite is definitely worth checking out if you're into quirky things with a surprising amount of depth. Blockum is a very cute competitive game where you face off against other blocky players to make it to the end of the level or be the last one standing. This colorful game looks like a ton of fun and is definitely worth looking into if you have a competitive group of friends. It's currently only available on PC, but will be coming to consoles sometime in the future. So put it on your wish list. Figment 2 released on March 9th. This interesting game has you delve into the human mind, fight musical bosses, and solve puzzles. I have honestly been interested in this one and the first game for a while, so we were really excited when the devs sent a game code over to us. They did let us know that the co-op is more of an assist mode, so do beware of that. We haven't had the chance to boot it up yet, so we're not sure how we feel, but let us know how you feel. Also on the 9th, we got Tiny Troopers Global Ops. This is a top-down twin-stick shooter that looks like a ton of fun. You'll play as an elite force of troopers and battle through 40 plus missions in a variety of different battlefields, defeat bosses, gear up, and have an explosive time on any platform you desire with local and online co-op that is cross-play compatible. DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos hit stores on the 10th. I honestly can't decide if this game looks way too childish or if it's just cute. It looks around the level of a Lego game to me, so maybe if you're a fan of DC or you have a kid that is, this might be a fun one to pick up. You play obviously as the Justice League and fight DC villains to save the world. On the 16th, one of our long-awaited co-op games, River Tales Stronger Together, finally released into early access on PC. The release only comes with the first two of six worlds, but we are hopeful to see the full game release sometime this year. This is a 3D platformer designed from the beginning with co-op in mind. You play as Finn the Fish and Furple the Cat, who need to work together to progress through a gorgeous landscape of blended land and water. Speaking of long-awaited games, we saw Bothill, A Withering World, release its first ever demo on the 23rd. And this has us super excited, as it looks to be one of the most relaxing and engaging co-op games out there. While it's probably still a way out, this game has you striving to restore the land to its former glory after Phil's landing. Each of you will play your own part in solving puzzles with your different abilities. Also, did I mention just how gorgeous this game looks? Mateys, the day has finally arrived! Curse of the Sea Rats will release on the 4th of April. 
We have been waiting for this one ever since their demo released last year. This Metroidvania has you exploring dark caves, gorgeous islands, and fighting fantastic bosses. While we do remember the demo being a little too difficult for us, the depth of this game is really what attracted us. We have high hopes for this Metroidvania, but you'll have to come back for a review on the 31st. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is finally coming to Nintendo Switch on April 21st. This is a remake of the old GBA turn-based strategy strategy games. To my understanding, the main campaign will only be solo, but you will have the opportunity to challenge your friends in local or online strategic battles. Releasing on April 25th, Trinity Trigger is perhaps one of the only times I have found myself interested in a JRPG. This game will support up to three players locally throughout the campaign. It is inspired by the RPGs of the past and will have you solving puzzles, fighting enemies, battling bosses, chatting with the townsfolk, exploring, and transforming forming your trigger between eight different types of weapons. While I'm not sure that Carly will be interested in playing this one with me, I might have to find somebody else to test it out with. On April 18th, God of Rock will release. At first glance, I thought this was just some guitar hero type game, but oh man, it is a little more than that. God of Rock combines a rhythm-based music game like Guitar Hero with a fighting game. You'll be battling it off against your opponent by pressing the buttons at the right time, blocking each other by hitting the right notes, and taking damage by missing them. And each character has special abilities to mess with your opponent's notes. This sounds like a fantastic idea to me, and while Carly will absolutely kick my butt every single time, we may still pick it up. Now onto those few announcements that we picked up on this month. Rain World Downpour was recently recommended in our comments by Dark, and it turns out that this game will actually be coming to all consoles sometime soon, though it is already on PC. While I originally thought that this was a brand new game, it is actually DLC for Rain World that will be adding an expedition mode, a challenge mode, a couple of other things, but most importantly, a co-op mode to the entire campaign, which will just be absolutely awesome. We had Enchanted release on PC with consoles slotted to come soon after. Though that's all of the information we have about the console release date. This is a cute in-keeping game that looks similar to the likes of Overcooked and Merrick's Market. So if those types of cooperative party games are your jam, then grab up to four players and start brewing potions, fishing, cooking, and fighting in this magical adventure. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when it's coming to consoles. We will be getting a dope upon Kingdom Connect. This is a party game for up to four players where you compete to rescue the most cities in exchange for the princess's hand in marriage so that those cities will start paying taxes again. It features a mix of board game and RPG elements. I'm not really sure what to make of this one. It supports up to four players and looks all right if you're into the whole board game meets video game thing. This honestly might be right down Carly's alley because she loves Mario Party and loves board games. It was originally released on the Wii and now you'll be able to play it on the Switch if you want to. Landing on all platforms on May 18th, Endless Dungeon is a grungy action roguelite that looks like it could potentially stop you guys from always asking me for more blood and gore in your games. The game supports up to three players locally and online and has you working together to protect a crystal, I guess? I don't know, it looks pretty fun, and it's definitely a game that I would pick up and play with the boys if I had any boys, but I don't. So if you guys do pick this one up, then definitely let us know how it is. Next up on May 19th, we will see the release of LEGO 2K Drive, an open world racing game from LEGO. The game will feature an open world for you to explore, a story mode, mini games, or good old races. And since it's LEGO, you can completely build your own vehicle or modify one that you own. This looks pretty cool, and the idea of an open world LEGO game does intrigue me, but I'm not sure how I feel. However, I'll tell you that the coolest thing about it is that your vehicle will seamlessly transform no matter the terrain, so whether you want to go over water or dirt or anything else, your vehicle is ready for it. Oh yeah, this one supports two players locally. We probably won't even play my personal favorite upcoming game in May, because we want to play it on Switch. 
Bread and Fred is coming to PC before eventually making its way to Nintendo. This game is designed specifically for co-op and has you playing as two penguins, Bread and Fred. Yes, that's bread as in the food. It has you work together using the power of motion to try to reach the top of an icy mountain. Reports say the game is pretty difficult and there is a Steam demo you can try, but it's cute, so we're probably gonna look at picking it up anyway. We had Filthy Animals Heist Simulator drop on PlayStation and Xbox, though the game was released on PC in April and we somehow missed it. While the trailer claims that this is not just another ragdoll game, it certainly looks to be. If you have ever played Rubber Bandits, then you have a pretty good idea of what's going on here. You play as mutant animals and work with your friends to commit progressively more challenging crimes. All of that surrounded by somewhat crude humor and ragdoll mechanics make this a game that some people will love and others will hate. So which one are you? On the 18th, Rubber Ducks Wave Racer came to Switch and Xbox, and this is another one we somehow missed in April, you can probably tell why. Racing games have never been much of our jam, but hey, if you're really into Rubber Ducks, or maybe have some kids you want to play a cute little game with, maybe this will make you happy. It's basically just another kart racer with the only thing setting it apart is the ducks and the water, but personally we haven't played it. On the 23rd, Glitch Busters Stuck On You released, and while we have yet to pick up a copy for ourselves, we have high hopes, and this is definitely on our list of games to try out soon. This is a 2D turned 3D game that has you playing as four different characters with funky blasters and unique magnetic abilities, such as being able to connect together and walk up walls. The goal is to take out all of the glitches that are taking over the net. It looks like some goofy fun, so if you're looking for something different, then this might just be the game for you to pick up. Today, or possibly yesterday, we'll see the release of Cassette Beasts on Nintendo Switch and Xbox, though again, it is already available on PC. Could this possibly be the co-op Pokemon game we have always wanted? I'm not sure about that, but it certainly looks like it might be. Cassette Beasts plops you in a world filled with monsters, but instead of catching them, you record them to cassette tapes and then transform into them to battle. It sounds a little funky, but also really fun. Otherwise, it keeps the standard Pokemon elemental turn-based combat and beast abilities needed to move forward. Though it also claims that there is an open world to explore, and I'm not really sure how well those two things work together. Along your journey, you will also always be traveling with a companion who will fight along your side and you can fuse your transformations, your monsters together. Um, this is where player two comes into play. They will play as your companion. And while we hope that this will be a fantastic multiplayer Pokemon type game, we are a little concerned that it might end up looking a little bit like Pokemon Let's Go. Street Fighter 6 will release on June 2nd and brings with it updated graphics and new innovative gameplay features. These games have never really been my cup of tea, but if you're looking forward to duking it out with your friends, then there you go. I don't really have to say much more, do I? On June 7th, we will see the release of MotoGP 23. I don't really know what to say about this, as like I said, I've never been big on racers, but if you're into motorcycles more than cars, then this one might be for you. The story seems to be solo, but like with most racers, you can add a friend in split screen and challenge them to cross the finish line first. Coming on the 8th, we have another racing themed game, though this time you play as the pit crew. Speed Crew features up to four player co-op that looks similar to Overcooked with crazy hazards and tools to fix them. While racing games are not our thing, we love a good hectic cooperative game like this one. It boasts 48 levels and a voice acted story that features the anti-hero Dominion Torrento. I wonder where they came up with that name. Similarly to MotoGP 23, I don't know enough about all of the Formula One games, but F1 23 is coming out on June 16th. So if you've been desperately waiting to race your friends in something a little more realistic than Rubber Duck Wave Racer, June seems to be the month for you. It's weird, but all of the talk of racers in the last few videos has made me want to start trying more of them. So let me know your favorite racer in the comments down below. Maybe we'll try it out. On June 1st, Tail Quest Defense was released, and I know what you're thinking. Another cat game? Honestly, me too. It seems like cat games are just popping off recently. Little City Big Kitty, Stray, all of these different cat games. There's just so many to go on and on about, and I don't really know how many of them are actually quality games. But anyway, this is a tower defense game, which is a genre that while I honestly have not played very many, I seem to have a fondness for them. This 
This one comes in some cutesy packaging that seemed to blend together a little too much for me, but if it was on anything other than PC, we would definitely be trying to get our hands on it. On the seventh, 2D and Top D found its way onto PlayStation and Xbox. This game was already available on PC and Switch, but for those of you who missed it, we wanted to throw it on here to give you a chance to check it out because it is a fun little puzzle game that we had a lot of fun playing on our Switch together. It even has a demo you can try on PlayStation. This game has you working together to swap back and forth between a 2D and top-down perspective to help you solve puzzles. As a cooperative game, it is a little bit slower because you do kind of have to take turns, one person playing as 2D and the other as top D, but it still was a lot of fun in our heads, so maybe you'll enjoy it too. If you're interested in the upcoming Pikmin 4 game, you may also like to know that the newly ported Pikmin 2 game comes with a multiplayer mode. It seems to be a separate sort of challenge mode that you can play together and not the full campaign, but if you were thinking of playing through the whole series, it's a nice added benefit. Speaking of retro-like games, Alice Sisters is a cute little platformer that just released on all consoles and has you either swapping between two sisters with different abilities or playing cooperatively. This is a pretty simple old school platformer with 28 levels and four worlds to explore. Each of the sisters has their own abilities, one of them changing size by hopping on mushrooms, and the other the ability to throw balls at blocks to break them or repel enemies. It is simple, but it will also only run you $6, so do with that what you will. The last game this month released today, and that is Everybody One to Switch. This is a party game filled with a bunch of different mini games to play with your friends. The games are simplistic and some use a lot of motion controls, while others are similar to some Jackbox party-like games. The coolest thing about this, however, is that it supports two to eight players using only Joy-Cons or two to 100 players using their smartphones. I don't even think I know a hundred different people, but maybe it would be a fun thing to do on like a live stream with you guys. So I don't know how well it would work, but let us know if you're interested in that. Coming on July 13th, we have Manic Mechanics. This looks to be an overcooked like game that has you repairing all sorts of different vehicles. The concept seems very similar similar to Speed Crew, which released in June. But if I'm being honest, this one does look a little more enjoyable to me, though I'm basing that all off of a 38 second trailer. So who knows, I could be wrong. You and up to three friends will work together to repair machines while getting zapped, trampled by cows, or any other assortment of unfortunate scenarios. There was also a little driving shown in the trailer, which I think is part of what had me a little more excited as Speed Crew only had you repairing things and not driving any vehicles. Another very exciting game comes to Switch and PC on the 18th of July. Ember Knights is one of the most charming games we have seen in a while. Seriously, every time I look at this game, I just feel a compelling urge to play it. This action roguelite has been in early access on Steam for a while. While we had a difficult time with it because we are notoriously bad at roguelites, it is a ton of fun and has over 2,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. You play as fiery characters and work together to progress through levels, fighting tough monsters, and gaining new abilities. The gameplay loop is like any other roguelite, but it's got charm coming out its ears. Now the 27th and the 28th are both really busy days for multiplayer games as they each have two releasing on them. On the 27th, we will see Pixel Junk Scrappers Deluxe, a very stylistically interesting beat-em-up centered around waste management come to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and PC. The fact that this is a deluxe edition implies that it's not new. However, as far as I can tell, it was only available through the Apple Arcade subscription, so it may be new to most of you. It supports up to four players locally or online and will have crossplay, which we love to see. In addition to the classic beat-em-up levels, there will also be some additional mini games that you can play against your friends in. Also on the 27th, another beat-em-up, Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons. This one sticks much more to that retro arcade style. You can play with two people and swap between 13 different characters. The description also calls this a beat-em-up with roguelike elements, featuring purchasable upgrades for each character at the end of each mission, and levels that adjust their difficulty depending on the order you play in. 
I don't know how you guys are going to decide between these two beat-em-ups coming on the 27th, but do let us know which one you want to pick up in the comments. Now, on the 28th, we will see the long-awaited release of Pikmin 4. We never got into the Pikmin games, but do know that Classic Co-op has high praise for Pikmin 3's co-op campaign. So we had high hopes for the co-op in this one, however, they were dashed, as it seems to be player two will be limited to a pointer on the screen that will be able to throw pebbles at enemies to stun them and use a couple items from your inventory. This was so incredibly disappointing to hear from me. It continues to astound me how Nintendo can make some of the best and the worst couch co-op games on the market. At least I'm anticipating that the co-op in this one will be severely underwhelming. Hopefully the next game will make up for this somewhat disappointing release. However, Disney Illusion Island comes out the same day and looks like a really fun platformer if geared a little bit more to their younger Disney audience. Though I can tell you this is definitely one we will be picking up because McKay will get a kick out of watching us play as Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, and Donald. And yeah, I'll be playing as Donald. The previously PC exclusive game D Corp is now available to play on Nintendo Switch. We've talked about this game several times before with our only hang up really being that it was only on PC and possibly that it was a little bit difficult. This colorful party game meshes overcooked with tower defense in a beautiful way. You and up to three friends play as little robots and attempt to collect resources from the environment while at the same time setting up your defenses and battling against the evil buggy aliens that are here to stop you. On the 25th of July, Super Raft Boat together released to PC. In this interesting blend of roguelike and building, you are forced to survive at sea because the world is flooded for some reason nobody knows. You and up to three friends will play together, shooting at anything that comes too close as you strive to defend your boat and build it even larger. On the 8th of August, we will see Chickenoids a Super Party come to both PC and Switch. This is a four player arena shooter that looks a little cuckoo. <laughs> Get it? Because they're chickens? Anyway. It's a funky little shooter that does not take itself too seriously. There are funny guns, and you can even mutate into a giant human chicken thing. Yeah, if you want a game to laugh about at parties, then this one might fit the bill. On the 22nd of August, Smurf's Cart is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, and is already out on Nintendo Switch. I don't have much to say about this one, it's another kart racer just featuring the Smurfs. I don't know guys, pick it up if you like. On the 31st of August, we have two of the games I'm most excited for, starting with Trine 5. That's right, we have an official release date. While we have still only managed to play the first game, we found it to be quite fun and have heard that they only get better. This game will have you playing as brave adventurers working together to do something. I don't know the story, something about defeating a clockwork army, but this 2D side scroller will be packed with puzzles, unique abilities for each character, and fun boss fights. If you like adventure and side scrolling games with friends, then this is definitely one to put on your wish list. Next up on the 31st of August, we have How to Escape. This is an isometric escape room that technically is not couch co-op. It will have one player playing on the console or PC, while the other uses their phone to give them directions and clues on how they should escape. We are big fans of escape rooms, and this gives us strong vibes of games like Escape Academy, the We Were Here series, and Operation Tango, which are some of our favorite games. However, it makes it possible to play with only one console, which is a point in its favor. King of the Hat is a brawler with an interesting twist, as you have to in order to stand out these days. This cartoony brawler requires you to jump on the opponent's hat in order to defeat them. You know, similar to how you have to jump on all of Bowser's minions' heads to defeat them. Yeah, like that. <laughs> But it's not quite so simple, because you can also throw your hat to knock other players' hats off and make them easier to stop, or just leave your hat in a corner while you go out on a rampage. The devs of this game sponsored a live stream for us a while back, and we had a ton of fun playing the game, so if it's your cup of tea, then go check it out on whatever your preferred platform is, because it's out now. Enchanted Portals is a 2D platformer with an art style that immediately causes one to think of Cuphead. I absolutely love the fact that the entire trailer shows the game in a cooperative mode with both players on screen. Though, now that I think about it, that may just be because they give you a robot companion and AI companion, I'm not sure. 
Either way, as novice magicians, you will be able to blast your way through this game either solo or alone, facing off against charming bosses with multiple phases, wield various different types of magic, and enjoy the colorful art style while struggling with a jumping debuff in the middle of battle. You can do all of this on PS5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC on the 6th of September, though PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will be coming a little later. Next up on September 12th, Super Bomberman R2. This game will let you play locally or online to blow up your friends in some intense strategic action. It comes with a new castle mode that will have one team trying to open all treasure chests while the other team protects them. The one thing that did pique my interest was the ability to design your own levels. I always love when games include that as a feature, so that's a thumbs up from us. It's going to be on all platforms and support four players locally. Oh, and Switch supports eight players locally. Possibly the game we are most excited for, Bati Byteland Overclocked, will be coming to Steam on September 15th and all other platforms early next year. This is a cartoony 3D platformer that reminds me a lot of Astro's Playroom, which we had an absolute blast with. You play as Bati and work to clean up all of the bugs and viruses running around in the computer system. I was a little concerned about the co-op in this one as we've had some bad experiences with 3D platformers that didn't have split screen, <coughs> Bal and Wonder World, <coughs> but that doesn't appear to be a problem with this one as it does include split screen. And it will set you and your friends on a fun, colorful adventure, gliding down slides, jumping between discs, and swiping at enemies. I honestly thought this next game released like a year ago, so I'm really not sure what happened, but Party Animals will be coming to Xbox and PC on September 20th. This is a wonky physics brawler, similar to games like Game Beasts. I'm not really sure if there's anything much to say about it. You play as cute fuzzy animals and beat each other up with wonky physics mechanics. These games can be super fun if you're playing them with the right people, but they have never really been much of our cup of tea, so if it's yours, go ahead and check it out. Perhaps the most intriguing of the games we have on today's list is Project Planet. This game has you working either as Earth to destroy humanity, or as humanity striving to survive. The concept sounds pretty interesting as it pits all of you against each other, while also having some of you work together. You can play with up to six people, each connecting to the game using their phone browsers. Each player will take on their own role to either prevent or cause the destruction of humanity. I remember watching a video of Dr. Mike playing Plague Inc, and Carly absolutely loved it and wanted to play it herself. So you can definitely look forward to us playing this one and maybe even doing it on a live stream with you guys. Let us know what you think of that idea. It will be available on Steam on the 25th of September. Three quarters of you are about to think I'm completely insane for even mentioning this next game, but uh, Paw Patrol World is coming to all consoles on the 29th of September. I know this is no glamorous co-op game, but as parents of a two-year-old who loves Paw Patrol, we may just have to pick it up. And with it costing $40, I am a little nervous and hope that he really enjoys the game. So for those of you with kids out there, this will let you play cooperatively with two players and explore the 3D world of Paw Patrol to complete rescue missions. We have Pocket Bravery. This is a fighting game with a charming graphical style reminiscent of the Neo Geo Pocket. Listen, it's a fighting game which happens to be one of my least favorite genres, but it looks pretty good. And it comes with original characters, online and local play, and elemental based combat. Next up we have the fast paced NASCAR Arcade Rush. This game comes with tons of NASCARs from the 50s to today. It might start sounding like I don't even like video games, but racers are my second least favorite game. So yeah. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy these in the right situation, but if it's your cup of tea, then go pick this up anywhere you play games. If you can get over the somewhat childish and cheap looking graphics, there may be a gem of a game in Paperman Adventure Delivered. This is a 3D platformer that features four different characters, each with their own abilities. You will have to travel across three worlds to retrieve stolen golden letters from a greedy dragon. There are tons of collectibles and it supports up to four players in local multiplayer. In a bit of sad news, Avatar The Last Airbender Quest for Balance received mostly negative reviews and it 
appears that it will not do justice to the beloved series. As we have not personally played the game, you'll have to dig a little deeper somewhere else to find out what's really wrong with it. If you're looking for something a little different, then Pizza Possum may just be the game for you. Your goal in this game is pretty simple, eat as much as you possibly can and don't get caught. You'll need to hide in bushes and distract dog patrols in order to complete your mission of eating as much food as human... possibly possible? Yeah, possibly possible. That seems to be pretty much everything. It's just a hectic fun time with a friend while you wreak havoc across the mountain and try to steal the dog leader's crown. Pick it up anywhere you play games. In more racing news, Disney Speedstorm has finally gone free to play, so you can pick it up and enjoy a kart racer with your favorite Disney and Pixar characters. Other than that, you're probably not gonna get much out of this that you wouldn't get out of any other kart racer out there. Oh yeah, and Disney Pixar inspired courses as well. In a game that I could not get a good read on, we have Indoor Kickball. This looks kind of terrible, but at the same time, it might just be one of those stupid fun games. You play 1v1 games of Indoor Kickball. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But there is all sorts of destructible objects in the 10 different kickball rooms. Also, lots of character customization. I don't know if it's any good, but it's out now wherever you play games. Moving on to the games released in October, we have Bang On Balls. This is a chaotic looking action packed 3D platformer that has you play, well, as a ball, or Bob if you wanna get into specifics. We actually have this one installed on our PlayStation right now, but the camera in split screen was way too zoomed in for us and gave us a little bit of a hard time, so maybe try this one in online instead. Despite the camera issues, this does look like a pretty great game. There is a ton to explore in the historically themed open world worlds from feudal Japan and the space race to Vikings and pirates. There are secrets to find, bosses to fight, and challenges to tackle. It's out wherever you play games and supports four players online or two players locally. Moving on, Wargroove 2 is a tactical turn-based adventure set in a war-torn world. This is mainly a solo experience where you command disposable units in different combat scenarios. However, if you want to face off against a real person, then the game offers versus or co-op multiplayer for up to four players. In even more racing news, we have Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 finally releasing, and this one is pretty cool. If you like Hot Wheels, you get a race on all of those classic orange tracks, except now you have boosters and rockets and cool cars and customization and everything. So if you were into Hot Wheels, if you like racers, this might be one for you. Bish Bash Bots is a robotic tower defense game. This cartoony take on the future has robots turning against humanity as no one ever would have guessed, and it's up to you to save the world. World. Travel through 32 different levels and use a mixture of turrets and giant hammers to clobber your enemies before they take over. During it all, you will upgrade turrets, collect scrap, and participate in the fighting yourself with up to four friends locally or online. It's available anywhere you play games. That seems to be a theme of this episode, available anywhere you play games. Sonic Superstars is a brand new 2D Sonic game running on the tails of Sonic Frontiers. You can play with up to four players as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. Me. I think most of us know what a Sonic game is, but if you don't, you run quickly from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. That may be opposite for you guys, left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. I don't exactly know, but you collect coins and be fast and just have stupid fun. This game comes with new abilities and chaos emeralds to help you multiply, swim up waterfalls, change form, and more. It's available anywhere you play games. If you're in the mood for something a little more competitive, then perhaps you will enjoy taking a look at Tricky Tanks. This top-down arena fighter reminds me of games like Boomerang Foo. There's a ton of silly guns to shoot each other with and just have an absolute blast blowing each other to bits with tanks and flamethrowers and all sorts of random stuff. You can play it locally with up to four players in 40 levels and try to be the last man standing. Super Mario Bros needs little introduction, but then again, I am a little biased as I have loved these games since I played the new Super Mario Bros Wii with my siblings as a kid. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a wonderful revival of the series that brings new abilities from the Bubble Flower and the Elephant to the new Wonder Flowers that completely change the level you are playing into something totally different when you pick it up. Perhaps it'll be top down, maybe you'll be a cake, who knows? When it comes to co-op, the collision has been removed so you'll no longer be hopping on each other's heads and knocking your friends into lava. 
and you won't be able to pick them up or bounce higher on top of one another. We're a little bit torn about this change, but we have been having a pretty fun time playing through Mario Bros. Wonder. Pickleball Smash is a four player game that does exactly what it sounds like, as you face off in pickleball matches against each other. If you're really into pickleball or just need to get your sports fix, then this game might just do it for you. It's available on all platforms right now. Moving into the shaggy month of November, we have a ton more games. Also, I don't really grow facial hair, so let me know if you're participating in No Shave November. Doesn't really make a difference to me. If you want to dig into a fantastic classic, then Alien Hominid HD may just be for you. This is an old game, but it is coming back. From the behemoth, the developers of Castle Crashers, comes this colorful action-packed side-scroller. Disclaimer, I have never actually played it, but it looks like a ton of fun, and it's from the developers of Castle Crashers. Basically, just take Castle Crashers, how many times have I said Castle Crashers now? Yeah, Castle Crashers and introduce aliens instead of knights, and you get Alien Hominid. With support for up to two players, this is one we will definitely be picking up. If you want to play Alien Hominid with four players instead of two, then may I introduce you to Alien Hominid Invasion. Man, Hominid is a really hard word to say very fast and memorize when I'm trying to get my script out of my mouth and into the microphone here. This second game supports four players and even lets each player choose their own difficulty. Something my wife and I really need because I always like playing on a slightly harder difficulty than she's comfortable with. I honestly don't really know how this is different from the first one, but they both look great. You get to master the alien's moveset, blast people, chomp heads off, and level up your alien along the way. Again, it's available anywhere you play games. Man, there are so many games I need a drink of water. The Smurfs 2 Prisoner of the Greenstone looks like a pretty decent 3D platformer. You set out on a journey to collect the fragments of a shattered green stone by traveling through portals and along the way battling against a brand new enemy. This game looks colorful and like a lot of fun. However, while the description says that it supports multiplayer, there still has been no co-op footage shown, so just keep that in mind when it releases on all consoles. November 2nd. We loved WarioWare Get It Together. It was fantastic and we recommend it to everyone. With the new WarioWare Movie game announced, we were pretty excited. However, with this new game utilizing the motion controls a lot more, we're not sure how good it's gonna be. We are definitely still gonna pick it up and are crossing our fingers that beating its over 200 micro games will be a blast. If it's not the best co-op game, it should at least still be fun to bring out at parties, hopefully. Get it for Nintendo Switch on November 3rd. Also on November 3rd, we will see Jumanji Wild Adventures available to play everywhere. If I'm honest though, this game looks pretty bad to me, I have no clue. It will support up to four players and allow you to play as Jack Black. We won't be picking this one up unless we hear some really good things. Yet another November 3rd release, DreamWorks All-Stars Kart Racing. Really, I don't think I need to say anything about this one. It's another kart racer, but it is not Disney themed. It is not Nintendo themed. It is not dinosaur themed. It is not Nickelodeon themed. It is DreamWorks themed. There you go. On November 7th, we will see the release of Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl 2. This will have 11 additional characters and all of the characters from the first game have been remodeled and reworked. As I said before, I'm not a huge fan of fighting games, so I could care less, but there you go. It will be available to play everywhere. If you are a fan of magic and spellcasting, then this might be for you. Spells and Secrets is a top-down game that lets you completely customize your character, which strangely enough is Carly's favorite part of like any game. Unfortunately, upon your first day in school, a strange incident throws the school into turmoil, leaving it up to you to save everyone. You will need to use your spells creatively, explore the ever-changing castle and grounds, rescue your classmates, and discover the mysteries and secrets of the school. You can play with two players everywhere on November 9th. November 14th will bring Super Crazy Rhythm Castle, a rhythm-based game that has you striving to keep the beat while performing various other tasks. It looks kind of like a mashup between Overcooked and Guitar Hero. Whatever it is, we will probably be picking it up because Carly loves rhythm games and she always beats me at them, so it would be fun to play one cooperatively with her. You'll be able to play this one wherever you choose. If you, like us, have a rambunctious toddler, you may be interested to know that Bluey, the video game, will be releasing on November 17th. 
I say this more to laugh at it because I don't really have $40 to spend on what will most likely be a terrible four player game. But hey, if you wanna try it out and let us know, please do. There were a ton of games on this list, but if you really want to know what the best couch co-op games are to play with your friends, your family, your significant other, then click on this playlist on screen right now because you don't wanna waste your money on all of the really bad couch co-op games out there. So we love you guys and we can't wait to see you over there. Y'all are awesome.